Hi, this is Misha, and this is one that we've been asked about covering on and off over the years, but the first time I had really a chance to do it. This is the very first Bulgarian Arsenal Kalashnikov type rifle to be imported and sold here in the USA. This is the SA-93. This gun definitely has an interesting story. There were no pre-ban Bulgarian AKs. None at all. This was the first. And for comparison, I brought out the last, or at least uh, the most recent. This is the Bulgarian Arsenal SAM7R. And actually, both of these guns come into the US very similarly, but they've been marketed and sold very differently. So I thought we would talk about it. There's a lot to be said. Probably this will be a, more than one video to kind of cover everything. But, got to start somewhere, right guys? In 89, as we all know, a ban was passed on importation of military-style guns. This is where thumbhole stocks, neutered bayonet lugs, and either covered up or non-threaded barrels start to appear such as uh, probably the most famous example in the AK world, the, uh, the Mac 90. Now, interestingly, these guns could still feed from standard double stack mags. That wasn't uh, a concern until 1997, 1998, so early on. Well, in 1993 in Bulgaria, communism was finally over. Arsenal was looking to break into the civilian market and introduced its first semi-auto AK, the SA-93. SA essentially for semi-auto and 93 for the year. These would start to come into the United States in 1994 and there would be Three or four importers. You would have Sentinel, which I believe might have been the first. And then you would have Dunav International and Dominion. And later Dominion would partner with Inner Arms. And so you would kind of have the whole thing there. This, again, very early days, breaking into the American market. People were just kind of going, signing contracts. You see the same thing with Romanian guns from 97 and 98. Well, as imported, and the reason it's really taken me so long to, um, to get one of these, they have a thumbhole stock, the lower tang was originally on the receiver, but then was cut off. I said it does take standard mags. It had wood handguards. It did not have a cleaning rod or the loop here for it. It did not have a threaded barrel. It did not have a bayonet lug. So it was pretty neutered, kind of Mac 90 style. On the other hand, these are very high quality AKs. They had true milled receivers. They were based on the original AK Type 3 or AK-47, meaning they have the medium heavy 16 inch barrel, cold hammer forged, chrome lined. We've got the 45 degree gas block. And we've got the double tang system, at least they would have, they didn't cut it off. Bulgaria did not really do the AKM. 
they kept on doing the milled AK. They also did do the stamped AK-74, but that's a story for another day. But what's interesting, while they did do the milled AK, they did introduce some AKM features. Most predominantly, they went from a thread in or screw in barrel to a press and pin in barrel, an AKM feature. They also started to introduce some stamped parts such as the mag catch here. They introduced some later features like the takedown button with the little lip on top. And they went from a blued finish to a paint over phosphate, paint over park. But they still retained the smooth top cover for the most part, the vented gas tube, and the front sling swivel being here as opposed to back here. So it was an interesting hybrid of AK and AKM. I traded for this gun. It was professionally converted. And what you have to do to really get these where they need to be. First, you have to install this lower tang, which isn't too difficult because the original receiver did have it. It was removed, so you just basically have to reinstall it. Then you can take off the thumb hole stock. I put on Bulgarian so-called Bakelite stock and grip. Actually, this is kind of a somewhat soft plastic material but people call it Bakelite now the hand guards that go with it are that AG4 like Bakelite mags they're much harder so that's that's kind of late Bulgarian furniture in between the wood and the modern black that they used moving on again the magwell's good we don't have to really adjust that We have to either drill a hole in the retainer here for the cleaning rod or just swap the retainer out for one that has a hole because as imported there's not one. We also have to swap the gas block if we want the loop for the cleaning rod. Why they didn't include it is beyond me frankly. Of course, we also have to swap out the front sight base. This gives us both the bayonet lug and the spring-loaded detent. Usually these came in smooth here without the hole for the detent. And then finally, you would need to thread the barrel because they came in unthreaded. This one is a full conversion with one minor point. It does not have the rear sling swivel, which I'm going to do probably later this week. All you have to do is cut a slot here, put it in. But otherwise, this is a full conversion to a late AK-47. And it's, aside from, of course, the U.S. work done, all Bulgarian. Bulgarian receiver, Bulgarian barrel. It was imported as a thumbhole stalker. And these are well known, well respected for both accuracy, of course, reliability, also for having a very smooth bolt, having a nice machined double hook trigger, and just really good fit and finish. They're, they're well respected in the AK community, and they hold a place because they're the first Bulgarian arsenal. That was the first, though. I want to compare briefly with the current offering because I think it's an interesting contrast. After the SA-93, which was only imported for about two years, 94, 95, they would go to the SLR-95, which would drop a lot of the vestigial AK Type 3 features going to the more the modern Bulgarian ARM1 pattern. The SLR 96, before anyone says anything, was still based on the classic AK, but very few of these came in. The 95 still took 
standard mags, it still had a thumb hole stock and was otherwise neutered. Well, in 98, they changed the law saying, okay, no longer can guns just come in ready to take high cap mags. Thus, the SLR 101 replaced the 95, and it was basically the same gun, just with a modified magwell that needed a 10 round magazine. Although it was done in such a way that it could be reversed once in the USA, so it wasn't a you know impossible thing, and that's what Arsenal did with many of the SLR 101s. Well, the 101 was imported to about 2001, 2002, then it disappeared, but then it reappeared in 2012, and then in 2013 it had a name change to this gun here, Sam 7R. Now, while the assault weapons ban, which was a domestic piece of legislation, expired in 04, the 89 ban never did. So this gun was imported under the same strictures as this gun, with the only exception of the magwell. And whereas this, the SA-93, was sold in a sporting band configuration, most of these Arsenal has sold have been so-called de-banned. But what's neat, we still have the same Bulgarian high quality receiver. We still have a Bulgarian 16 inch chrome lined cold hammer forge barrel. But this is more of an AKM profile. It's a lighter weight and we have an AK-74 type 90 degree gas block. We've gone away from the ported gas tube. And this can be had with either a standard front sight base and 14 millimeter threaded barrel or the AK-74 type with the lug here and 24 millimeter which would take a standard AK-74 muzzle brake, or in the case of mine here, a Bulgarian so-called egg beater flash hatter. So basically this is their modern gun, complete with the modern AR M9 furniture. But even though it's a little more modern, it's the same high quality, smooth, reliable, accurate gun as the <clears throat> SA-93, except you don't have to go to all the trouble of debanning it. People know this is a true import, but it's sometimes rumored on message boards that this is assembled in the USA. That's not true, at least not with the newer ones that have been coming in since 2012. These are Bulgarian imports, same as earlier. So you have really the same quality. It's just this one is a more modern gun with the more modern features. Whereas, of course, this one is a more classic gun. And if you really wanted to make it look classic, of course, you could put wood furniture on it and it would be really close to a Russian. It would just have a few of the newer features like the paint finish, pinned barrel, and stamped mag catch. Now, like I said, coming in, these technically can't take high cap mags, but they play with that pretty, pretty well. They just have a little material they need to machine out in here. Also, maybe a little bit of tinkering with the so-called bullet guide. It's a very minor process to get this to feed successfully from any mags, including a modern waffle like this here. But for more on this gun, we've got plenty of videos and I'm sure we'll do more in the future. But it's just a really cool looking and nice shooting gun. And to be fair, as is the SA-93. I just never had the time, energy, to convert one of these because really it's the gas block swapping and all this to do it right. You need a professional and 
I don't know. I and mean, for what these go for versus these, I just, you know. But one came in on a trade. And since most all of the heavy lifting had already been done by the gunsmith, I figured, why not? It's one that's been missing from my collection for quite some time. And I bet you see it in a number of future videos. So yeah, I think we'll end there. There's a lot more that we can say about it, and we will. But I wanted to show you my uh, newest AK. In fact, this is probably the first AK I've really picked up in quite some time, at least in 762 by 39. If you have an SA-93 or SLR-95, we'd love to hear about your experiences with them in the comments below. Any other questions, we'd love to hear and try to help if we can. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd really like to help support the channel, just go over and check out the link to our Patreon page. A little bit goes a long way, but if you can't, just uh, sharing is, is, is great. We appreciate everything, guys. And if you'd like to know more, 